Nicole says Rigo doesn't have it upstairs. His lack of education is completely embarrassing. And there's something missing downstairs, too. He does not wear underwear. I like to hang free. <laughs> but her blind date was well-educated. Grammar was perfect. Well-dressed. He was wearing boxers. And well-built. He's got, like, a total six-pack, and Rigo's getting a little bit older. Let me tell you, you're not getting young yourself. After he has little to say to his date. Besides the fact that he doesn't wear underwear. Will they have a change of heart? What? Welcome to Change of Heart. Today's couple, let me tell you about them. They met at a club last New Year's Eve. He saw her from behind, and her adorable, yes, her adorable rear end set his uh, fireman's instincts ablaze. Well, she noticed him noticing her, and being a student, of course, she took note. Now, by the time the ball dropped, their lips were locked, and they've been burning for each other for the past eight months. Please welcome Nicole Mize and Rigo Ariano. <laughs> Welcome to the show. And Nicole, you're a graduate student, is that right? Yes, and what I'm is a it? And what is it that you study? I study sex, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> I study interpersonal relationships and the sexual uh, encounters therein. Everything from how alcohol affects sexual inhibitions to condom use and even arousal. How about that? <laughs> so I'm thinking, Rigo, if this is what she's studied, you got to be the happy beneficiary of all those exams. Let me tell you, I give it's her all five books. in bed. Oh, no, 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 this is you. He always says that I'm trying to analyze everything, but the truth of the matter is, Rico's just a sexual deviant, and he's got some strange, strange fetishes, and anyone in their right mind, whether they were studying psych or not, would be trying to figure Chris, it when out. Chris, when you sit there and you want to get intimate with somebody, and next thing you know, uh, they're talking about nine out of ten men do this, and nine out of ten women do this, and hey. hold me here and hold me there, you kind of sit no. there and... All of a sudden, just overanalyzing the whole situation. Goes no, it's it. just trying to figure out your strange tendencies, that's all. <laughs> now, Nicole, you're working on your PC. Now, is he interested in education? Oh, his lack of education is completely embarrassing. I'm getting ready to get a PhD, and he can't even use a sentence without using a verb in the wrong content, in the no. wrong tense, and we can't carry on intellectual conversations. Rigo, bad I, sex, I, bad sentences, you're just not doing good. <laughs> no common sense whatsoever. Well, Let me uh, tell you. She's too naive, and at the same time, she just book smarts, but she has no common sense. Well, and that can be a problem. Uh, Nicole, what about Rigo when it comes to jealousy in the relationship? What's he like? He is the most insanely jealous boyfriend I think wait, I have wait, ever wait. had. Okay, wait. I can't go out with my friends if he can't come out with me. These girls but, look like Baywatch. They're six foot blonde. Well, no wonder he wants to go out with you. <laughs> they're all they're all fake, but and at the same what? time, they go out and they get everything free all night long. So no, you think they're a bad influence? Very much. No, so. all of them have boyfriends, and their boyfriends are perfectly fine with them going out. They say they have boyfriends. Now, Rigo, besides no. the fact that she hangs out with these women, has she ever given you a reason to justify all that jealousy? Uh, let me give you an example. About three months ago, she went. <laughs> back to Europe to do research on condoms. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go with her, but due to that, uh, this is really the fire season right now and I'm really in demand. Um, she took another guy with her. Oh! Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let, me, let me explain. And his study is male erection. Oh. Well, no, this is not male erection. Wait, wait, wait. Let male me, erection let me and condom. It was not, no, it was arousal. He was studying arousal and I was studying condom use. Oh. Erection. <laughs> Well, there's a likely explanation, I'm sure. Rigo, what about the fact that you're a fireman uh, and this is a busy season? Is she understanding about what you do? I get more excitement out of fighting fire than with her because she's so by the books, it's just unreal. What's the point of being in a relationship, though, if you can't see your boyfriend or the person you're with for like three weeks? When, I just don't understand When that. duty calls, I go. At no, three weeks at a time, choice. some long extended time. You have time. your choice yes. to work overtime or not. Right, Nicole, let's talk about habits in a relationship. What would Rigo's most disgusting one be? Oh, <laughs> He does not wear underwear. Ever. Ever. And he wears really... He wears really that, that's not necessarily disgusting. No, he wears really tight jeans. And you can see everything. And he's a firefighter. And he's running... You just think let's he'd want some Let's support. be realistic, Chris. I like to hang free. I don't like to be... No, that's like, no. It's, it's, it's All right, wait, wait, Rico. What about her undergarments? What about hers? Oh, uh, let me tell you. She wears all these lingeries. And 9 out of 10 women wear this to get their husbands aroused or their boyfriends. And... It just doesn't I've never work. heard a it man complain about me. a woman wearing nice lingerie, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, tell us what's kept the two of you together for eight months. Well, Rico's actually more mature than any other guy that I've ever dated. Um, he, uh, 
he's very complimentary. He's very uh, good to me. He cooks for me. He takes good care of me. And um, he's a firefighter, and every woman kind of has a little bit of weakness for a man. That fantasy thing about a fireman, right. And Rigo, what about Nicole being uh, different than other women that you've dated in the past? Honestly, Nicole's a woman that really listens. And uh, it's tough when you get home from a stressful day, your stressful duty, you know, you come home and it's nice to have somebody home, you know, and listen. Nicole, why come on the show and do this? Well, I'm actually getting ready to go over uh, to Oxford to finish my PhD studies and Europe's a far, long way away. And I just want to kind of see whether or not this is worth hanging on to or if it's time to kind of move on. Gotcha, because that's definitely major long distance. Now, (laughs) when we come back, we're going to find out why Rigo would have preferred facing a fiery death over facing his date. So stay tuned. Nicole. Now, the only things that Rigo and his date can agree on is that their date crashed and burned. And they each say that the other caused things to go up in flames. So, let's meet his date and hear their story. Please welcome Victoria Massengale. Hi, Victoria. Welcome. Of course, you know Rigo. Now, Rigo, I said earlier you would have faced fiery death over facing Victoria. Why is that? There was no chemistry whatsoever. I mean, when I got there, she was dressed like she was going out to, like, the prom or a nightclub or something. You told me that I looked great, and in fact, when I... I was only doing it to be nice. Rigo, did you actually have time to take off work to go on the date? There was about 110 fires going on in California, and I had a, I ended up taking a half a shift off. My supervisors or captains were pretty, they were pretty upset about it, but... I went ahead and did it and, and thought it, you know, try to have the best time I could. And uh, let me tell you, no kind of gratitude whatsoever. And boom. <laughs> so, Victoria, let me get your side. How was he dressed uh, for this date? He was pretty much a slob. He was wearing oh. jeans and a T-shirt. I, we were going to the Hollywood Bowl. You know, I spent a lot of money on the tickets. I just, I was dressed like I was going on a nice date. Unfortunately, and... when you're at work for five days, who's got yeah, time? Yeah, but Nicole, is this, tip- is this typical? Does he That's dress up? So- so typical of him. He dresses with a tight pair of jeans and a shirt from the clearance rack. It is so typical. I would not, I, don't, I completely understand. So you're in agreement with what that whole situation. Oh. Rigo, what about talking with Victoria and having a conversation with her? Talking to her was almost like talking to my sister. I mean, it was like counseling. You know, it was, I felt it was like I should have paid her money to listen to, 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 to tell my problems about my girlfriend. <laughs> Did he, did he reveal anything to you that you thought maybe was a little too personal, just getting to know somebody? Um, besides the fact that he doesn't wear underwear and that some woman paid him fifteen hundred dollars to be a male what? escort once. Fifteen oh. hundred? Wait, wait, wait. I'm sure that was a lie. I can't. Let's, yeah, I'm, that I'm thinking, Rico, you show up at the doors of male escort. I'm asking for a refund. <laughs> personal, but I'm just, you know, I don't know. Uh, Rigo, I understand you guys went to the Hollywood Jazz Festival. Is that something that you would enjoy? Let me tell you, Nick, I don't, I don't find any kind of excitement paying to listen to the radio. I mean, let's be realistic. And that here she's, re- class, she's right dressed up as like she's, we're going to the prom or something. I, I thought it'd be nice. I've got a bottle of wine, a bottle of champagne, a little brie, a little cheese and crackers. <laughs> And it was like she was empty-handed, like everything she wanted on a platter for her, you know? And it was like a spur of the moment. I mean, I spent $130 on the ticket. She got the tickets. I've got, yeah. I've got $130 for her in my pocket if she wants it. So, back. Victoria, I mean, oh. Victoria, sure. there you are. I mean, was it that blatantly obvious that he wasn't enjoying himself? Or Wait a minute. You know, let, he, let, me, he, let me interrupt. Let me interrupt. Wait. The, the, the funny thing was is that I even got her filet mignon when we were there. I mean, even everybody around us was in in amazement. On paper, this all sounds good. I go to the bathroom, and I come back, and she's telling everybody that we're on this date. And I'm going back, and everybody's, like, shaking my hand. Hey, yeah, you're on this date. Great. Giving you you high fives. Yeah. So explain, Victoria. Well, he was supposed to to bring dinner, and he brought cheese and crackers. And and so when other people around us were eating steak, and he said, well, do you want some? I was like, well, sure. Let me tell you, I'd rather be at home with Victoria with Nicole than to waste my time with you. So it was bad. Uh, Victoria, how was he behaving when you guys were hanging out there? He drank the entire bottle of wine. He drank three quarters of the bottle of champagne. He got beer. He was telling dirty jokes. He's playing with my hair. He's trying to give me a massage. Oh, my God. 
I was embarrassed. Well, the funny thing was, Chris, is that I, prior to going out, I talked to her, and she said, oh, one glass of wine would get me completely drunk. This little woman can drink. Let me tell you. <laughs> she can drink like no other. Let me tell you. Well, you weren't doing she too bad yourself. She was even yourself, sipping, sipping wine with the people. But, Rico, what about the fact that you're hanging out with her? Was it obvious? Was she making it obvious she wasn't interested? Like I said, it was like going out with my sister. There's just oh, no... Just... Nothing. No chemistry there at all. Not now, at Victoria, all. so he was doing all this drinking. If he drank that much, you had to drive home, right? Right. I drove home. It's been a while since I've driven a stick shift, so it was a little Almost gone to two accidents. But... Excuse me. Well, she yes. had a drive, though. He kept popping it out of gear. Oh. I'm trying to drive. He keeps popping it out of gear. Maybe I was if like, you would have put it in gear, nothing would have happened. I was like, <laughs> I was like, listen, I just, I just want to get home. I just want to be safe. I just want to get away from. So, Victoria, him. you finally yeah. get home. <laughs> you, you finally get home. Describe that scene. I'm taking the stuff out of the picnic basket, giving him his stuff back. He takes the crackers and chucks them in my neighbor's yard. Oh. I was like, what are you doing? Nicole, how do you feel? That he, you know, he's over there. He's, I guess, a little bit <laughs> tipsy. He's throwing crackers. I, you know, I honestly, I don't understand what could have... I, I have no comment. It's not the guy know. that you know? You, I, it doesn't even sound like him, but I wouldn't be surprised. Oh. <laughs> now, Rico, when wait, you, wait, 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 you had to say goodnight, were you guys alone wait, at that Chris, point? Let me tell you, when, when we pulled up in front of her uh, apartment, she says, there was a guy waiting for her on the sidewalk. Oh. So kind of weird, exactly 1030, we pulled up and there's a guy standing there. No and Victoria, problem. who was this guy? It was my next door neighbor. I, I, I did a U-turn and I, they were lip locked. We, I made an excuse. I made an excuse to go to the bathroom. I called him. I was like, "Chris, please rescue me." I was so happy <laughs> right. to see him. I gave him a hug. I didn't. Right. I, you you we needed somebody kissing. to save you at the very end of the day. Exactly. Your I didn't belt. want him to come in. He was. Yeah. It was obvious. He was like, "Well, do you want to go to a bar? Do you want to? Mm -hmm. Do you want to drive around a little while?" And well, I was let like, me no, ask you this. Obviously, you didn't have a very good time with this yeah. guy. What oh. do you think Nicole sees in him? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Because there certainly wasn't a whole lot going on with the two of you, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, well, Rigo was busy fighting with his date. Nicole was busy kissing hers. And we're going to hear all the dish when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> all right, we heard uh, what didn't happen on Rigo's date. Now we're going to hear what did happen on Nicole's. According to Nicole's studies, seven out of ten women prefer men with buff bodies and deep voices. Well, Nicole said she needed only two things to give her data passing grade. She wanted a sexy scholar who loves his Calvins. Please welcome boxer babe Rick Smaltino. <laughs> Now, Rick, I know that uh, you and Nicole met at a coffee shop. What were your first words to Nicole? I was just like, wow. I mean, I could not believe it to put me on with somebody as beautiful as her. She was a little yeah. crazy. So, you were feeling lucky from the get-go. And what about you, Nicole? Were you used to such immediate flattery? No. See, Rico, the only time he compliments me is when he's complimenting himself. So it's like, you know what? Oh. We're two attractive people. So it was really nice to be told that I was pretty. And uh, Rico's never told me that I'm beautiful. <laughs> so that made you feel good. That's nice. Now, Rick, I'm, you guys, you're going to leave the coffee shop. What were the plans for the date? Well, we decided to go to the Derby. We were both really interested in that movie Swingers. Is that a dancing restaurant? Or oh, yeah, it's a dancing dance type club? restaurant. Yeah, it's great. Now, Nicole, would Rigo be up for something like that? Oh, never. He, he's always so busy with his work, and he doesn't like to dance. So, no, it's definitely something uh, different and fun. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, so, I fight fire, so I'm at demand. So, you know, uh, you something choose a little to work different. the overtime. I don't have, now, you Rick, talk to work the overtime. Well, Rick, since we brought up his job, what do you think about him being a fireman? I hate firefighters. Oh, seriously. Okay. Any particular reason? I think the most hypocritical person, you know, people in the whole world, they always cheat on their girlfriends. Just oh. Now, how would you know this and classify all firemen like that? I used to be a part-time firefighter for a... Uh, oh, for, like, wannabe, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. So you speak from experience, exactly. I see. Now, Rick, we heard earlier about Nicole's studies of uh, sexuality, and Rigo doesn't particularly like that. What about you? I think they're great. I mean, it goes way, way deeper into, like, just the sexual part of it. It goes into emotions. The, you know, the brain disease, half of it. It's just, it's real interesting stuff. I just Come on, really There's a lot of levels there. <laughs> so, uh, do you think the problem with Rigo is he just doesn't get it or what? I think he's just a sexual demon. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, oh well, that's what Nicole said earlier. So, Nicole, Rick's a student as well. Does he get the A in English? Oh, definitely. Definitely an A student in English. His grammar was perfect. You know, he was making complete sentences. It was so much better than... Mm -hmm. I, I could carry on a conversation with him, a really intellectual conversation that I can't really have with Rick. Now, what about his anatomy? 
Oh. How's he right there? <laughs> he gets an A there too. When we were uh, yeah. when we were at the Derby, he uh, he lifted up his shirt and he's got a great chest and like a total six pack. And Rico's getting a little bit older, so he's uh -huh. you know he's not as in shape as he used to be. Hey, let me tell you, you're not you're not getting young yourself either. Oh. Uh -huh. Hardly. Now, Cole, hardly. since he was pulling up his shirt besides his stomach, was there anything else you noticed? Yes, he was wearing boxers. They, they were, had on uh, underwear. Yes, yes, they were uh, plaid, blue, and I actually got to yeah. touch them. They were really soft. Oh. <laughs> so, Rick, besides uh, the curiosity about the boxers, what about other aspects of your sex appeal? She was kind of interested in my lips. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, she asked me, you know, how me and my ex kissed, and instead of telling her, I just showed her. You showed her. Yeah. <laughs> says seven out of ten women would say what about his kissing? It's extremely dangerous because once you start kissing him, you can't stop. Is that Rigo? Rigo, he's scoring a lot of points over there, huh? How are you feeling? Okay. You all right? <laughs> Just to make sure you're all right you're with us. Now, Nicole, uh, you guys were having a good time at the club, I guess, dancing and everything. Did you go anywhere after that? Oh, well, the band started to wind down around one o'clock, and neither of us really wanted the date to end. So uh, we decided to go uh, to the secluded part of the beach. Oh. <laughs> and Rick, at, at the beach there, describe what the atmosphere was like. Well, it was really romantic. We went out on a little trail, and you know the moonlight was just perfect and everything. And there's some rocks, so I picked her up and I moved her from rock to rock. And I was kind of surprised. She said she's always gone out with wimps oh. her whole life. So Dude, I hope you had a back brace to pick her up, buddy. Oh yeah, that's, it's just you know yeah. I'm just in shape, bud. Yeah, oh, my I'm just God. in shape. I bet you are wannabe. So it was like you know I moved her. You know we went to the rocks and so this wait. is nice. And Nicole, you're in this romantic atmosphere. Did it lead to some more romance? Oh, of course. I mean, the moonlight was there and everything. And we just, we started kissing and we Nine talked a little. Nine out of ten men what? No, we, <laughs> we just started kissing and we talked. And we, uh, neither of us still wanted to leave. So uh, before we knew it, it was four in the morning. <laughs> so now it's 4 a.m. I'm thinking, Rick, you've got to be a little bit tired at this point. So a quick good night kiss and that's I really it. didn't want the deal to end or, you know. Your date, right? <laughs> so what I decided to do was I said, okay, when we get to the car, we're just gonna make a deal. We're just gonna make one quick kiss and we're out of there. Well, one quick kiss turned into about a million. We just couldn't stop kissing. So oh, it just <laughs> continued. Oh, yeah. Wow. And Nicole, uh, did Rick, did Nicole finally leave at some point or what? She finally left and she, you know, she got out of the car, you know, and I was just like, okay, I'm just waiting around just to make sure everything's okay. And then she came back. <laughs> oh, she gets back in the car. <laughs> Nicole, you got back in the car for what? No, I didn't get back in the car. I just made him roll down his window. Oh, okay. He got me so aroused when we were kissing that I'd forgotten my way to the freeway. Oh. <laughs> it came back for directions. So, Nicole, once you finally got back on the, on the freeway, uh, what, what path did your thoughts take? Well, you know what? Actually, when I got back on the road, I, I couldn't help but think he had such an early class in the morning. And, I mean, I know he says education is really important to him, but... It was kind of immature since he had to get up so early for that class. And Rico is actually really mature and dedicated to his work. Did your mom pack your work. lunch for you, pal? Or <laughs> hey, you know, uh, <laughs> he sure did. Yeah. So that's how yeah. things ended then. Oh, I yeah. forgot. Did you take the bus? Huh? I, took bus, the bus. I took the bus. I took the bus. All right, hang on, guys. What does the future hold for Nicole and Rico? We're going to find out when we come back, so stay tuned. Because they're about to be separated by a continent and they wonder if their relationship can actually survive. So before Nicole leaves for London, we sent them both out on dates to see whether or not they'll be sending each other love letters long distance. So here we go. Rigo, we're going to get your decision first. You've been with Nicole for about eight months now. It's clear that you had a really bad date with Victoria. Things just didn't go good there. So I got to ask you, do you want to stay together with Nicole? Yes. He says yes. Stay together. But we go, I want to know this, that it's a learning thing from the experience by going out with Victoria. You know what, honestly, Chris, it's a jungle out there, as you can see. And um, <laughs> I guess You've maybe... Never had complaints before. I guess maybe I should just go ahead and take some time off from work and spend time with the ones you care oh. about. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Victoria, obviously you're relieved that you're done now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nicole, let's go to you and get your decision. Rigo says he wants to stay together. There you were with Rick. You had a really romantic time. There was a lot of kissing going on. The date went on, but what do you say? Well, you know what? Going out with Rick just made me realize that I was settling with Rico, so I've had a change of heart. <laughs> Rick, does that work for you? Rick is okay with that. 
while coming on the show, Regal. Hopefully you learned that you do need to give your relationships a little more time next time around. <laughs> All right, that is our show for today. Thanks to Regal and Victoria. And good luck to Rick and Nicole. We'll see you next time on Change of Heart.